David Hubel attended medical school at McGill University. Upon graduation, he completed three years of hospital residency and two years of specialized residency in neurology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. His interest in the nervous system grew during his residency, and in 1958, he transferred to the Wilmer Institute at Johns Hopkins Hospital. There, he worked under the direction of Stephen Kufler, the father of modern neuroscience. And I think in the end, I decided the visual cortex would be at least, if not more fun, the easiest because it's uh, right underneath the skull and easy to find. <laughs> so I, I uh, got nowhere at first. And um, in fact, I discovered that cortical cells don't, don't visual cortical cells don't respond to visual stimuli because I made the same mistake as other people had made before by shining a bright light into the animal's eyes and seeing no effect at all on the cells. And one day, I, I, in a fit of desperation, these were uh, chronically implanted cats I was working with. They were all awake behaving. And I stood there and went like this and found that the cell fired like a machine gun when I went in one direction and not at all in the other. So it, it was, I was on to something. But of course, being basically a, a stupid person, I never tried this. <laughs> <laughs> Torsten Wiesel attended medical school at Karolinska Institute Medical School and received his MD in 1954 at age 30. The following year, 1955, Wiesel began his work at Johns Hopkins Hospital under Kufler. It was there that Wiesel and Hubel began their 25-year-long research partnership. It was at Johns Hopkins that they began researching the visual pathways in the central nervous system, specifically the striate cortex. I had when neuroscience existed, so, and, and so uh, I went to the session and uh, listened to David, and I realized that uh, this was a person of obvious interest. And then <laughs> later on, uh, uh, my colleague I worked with on the retina, before that, we visited uh, David in Walter Reed, and uh, he showed us how to make Thompson electrodes. And so that was our earlier contact before we then met. Uh, and, the and actually, when Steve wrote to David and asked him if he was interested in joining, then we had a, a meeting, uh, Steve Kufler, David, and I, to discuss what we were going to do. And that was the time when we actually uh, more decided that we knew something about the retina from Kufler's work and from, from uh, I had been working on, on the retina with a colleague, Ken, uh, the other postdoc who left by the name of Ken Brown. And uh, so he said, and I did some single cell recording in the, in the, in the ganglion cell. So we, we decided it would be fun to see what happened <laughs> if you record and more centrally, from the lateral geniculate body, the relay nucleus, and the, and the cortex, because nobody knew anything about it. It was unexplored territory. The reason why it was unexplored... In 1981, David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel won the Nobel Prize for their research about the neural mechanisms of vision. Their studies on the primary visual pathway influenced how neuroscientists thought about the brain during the second half of the 20th century. From Hubel and Wiesel's award-winning research, there is a vast increase of brain studies. Hubel and Wiesel began the work in the late 1950s. However, a great deal of information was already known about the brain, especially about visual perception. 19th century physicist and physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz and Wilhelm Wundt and Gustav Fechner initiated the modern study of perception from a psychological perspective. But it was Helmholtz who gave way to understand perception in terms of visual system physiology. Helmholtz's theory of color vision system gave way to Hubel and Wiesel's life research. 
Color perceptions are a direct result of the way cone photoreceptors in the neurons related to them analyze and represent stimulus features, and therefore our perception of the properties of objects in the world. This was the forerunner of Hubel and Wiesel's work on the primary visual pathway. Hubel and Wiesel explored the primary visual pathway in cats, and later in monkeys. What would happen to the neural connections in the cortex if one eye of an experimental animal was closed during early development, depriving the animal of normal visual experience through that eye? Hubel and Wiesel conducted many studies in which they sutured the eyelids of kittens shut to demonstrate the importance of the visual experience at the early stages of development and how these experiences affected neural connectivity in the visual cortex during this critical period. Within the first week the kittens were born, Hubel and Wiesel closed a single eye on each of the kittens in the experimental condition and studied cerebral function of the visual cortex after maturation. They observed what we now refer to as neural reorganization. When looking at the electrophysiological recordings of neuron function, they showed that the sensory deprivation of kittens resulted in a loss of neural firing in the deprived eye, and instead the cortical cells were engaged in neural reorganization so that the function they would have had in both eyes was adapted to be functional in just the one. The kittens never recovered their visual perception even when their eyelids were left open for months following their sensory deprivation. On the other hand, Experiments on adult cats with the same manipulation of the eyelids showed that there was no impact or influence on neural connections. They conducted similar experiments on primates such as monkeys and observed the same phenomenon. Hubel and Wiesel sutured a single eye of each of the monkeys for the first six months of life, which is their critical period for development, to explore the effects it has on their primary visual cortex. When six months passed, they removed the monkey's sutures. The monkeys had lost practically all use of their vision for the eye that had been deprived of visual sensory information. In comparison to the cats, the monkeys' electrophysiological recordings showed that the cells of the, vis the visual fields were relatively normal and functional. In comparison to the cats, the monkeys' electrophysiological recordings showed that the cells of the visual fields were relatively normal and functional. Although there was minimal to no national coverage of their research, within the psychology world they had numerous publications in multiple research journals. They were published in the Journal of Neuropsychology for their article on receptive field of cells in striate cortex of very young, visually inexperienced kittens. In 1981, Hubel and Wiesel won the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology for their work with the kittens and visual deprivation. Their research focused on the neural rewiring of the brain and how when one wire connection is disrupted, it can be rewired so that overall function is restored, even without the use of the affected connections. Hubel and Wiesel's research also provided significant findings to the overall brain function. Their research showed the mechanisms of the overall brain function and development of the brain in the early stages of life. The initial innate wiring of the brain requires normal experience in early development to have adjustable neural connectivity. This finding explains the rapidly diminishing cortical plasticity that results from natural maturation. The clinical implications of Hubel and Wiesel's research is vast. It provided a path for clinical ophthalmology in children specifically. It provided insight into how to correct for double vision and deficient control of the eye muscles in the early stages of development for youth. Their research findings provided evidence for early intervention treatments in youth and infants. For deficient control of the eye muscles, an eye patch over the good eye can be placed to encourage the development of the eye that lacks proper control and development. Their research also provided evidence for the clinical implications in adults. Similarly to the adult cats, human adults that have eye problems such as cataracts retain the ability to see properly even if left untreated for an extended period of time, i.e. they can be left untreated for long periods of time and following treatment they were still able to see. This fits in with the systems of thought that we have discussed by looking at the physiological standpoint rather than just the observable behavior that resulted from paired stimulus responses. There has been a shift in how we perceive our bodies as mechanical things. Humans are born with a set way of doing things that are unable to be diverted from. Hubel and Wiesel have shown that there is a bilateral influence to our actions and reactions. Humans are adaptable, which relates to the concept of neuroplasticity.